What's up guys, it's Eric from Rare Candy and welcome back to another one of our early Ultra Prism deck profiles. And today we are taking a look at Polion, which is a new stage 2 Pokemon from Ultra Prism. And this is actually the same list that we used in our recent testing rounds video. So if you actually want to see how this deck looks in action, I will have a link in the description if you guys want to check that out too. And also, if you are new to the channel and unfamiliar with those testing rounds videos that we post, they typically feature kind of our early unrefined uh, starting points to begin testing from. So there might be a few things in this list that we could potentially tweak or improve, but uh, you know, just something to keep in mind as we're going through this deck profile. So for Empoleon, if we are playing that, of course, that means we have some Piplups in this deck. And there are two Piplups in Ultra Prism, but we are choosing to play this one just because it has 70 HP. Now, there is one with 60 HP that has a slightly better attack, but like I said, I think the extra hit points does make a bigger difference just because things like Buzzwool GX won't be able to knock you out as easily. Uh, decks that might rely on Espeon GX, I'm sorry, EX, to do big de-evolution plays like Decidueye, for example, have a much harder time when basics are 70 hit points, not 60. Also, it allows you to potentially attach uh, to your active Piplup if you have to start with it and not be at risk of a Tapu Lele double Carlos energy knockout. So like I said, the 70 hit points does make, I think, a bigger difference in this case. So we're also playing two copies of Prinplup, of course, the second evolution, or I should say the first evolution in the evolution line. And we are playing this one over the one from Breakthrough just because it has a much better attack. So for just one water energy, you do 20 damage and flip a coin if heads your opponent's active is now paralyzed. So not a game-breaking attack by any means, but uh, this can be good, especially to maybe buy yourself a turn while you're still setting up. So there are actually situations where I have used this, so, uh, you know, it's not a bad attack. And, of course, the star of the show, though, we are playing four copies of Empoleon, that new Stage 2 from Ultra Prism. So this is definitely a card, if you did see our set review, that I was pretty optimistic about. I really enjoyed this card for a few reasons. First of all, 160 hit points, really solid on a one prize attacker like this. Uh, Lightning Weakness, something not many people have mentioned about this card, I don't think, but I think something that's actually very important because right now there's not a whole lot of really popular metal Pokemon in the format. Uh, I mean, the Tapu Koko promo uh, does pop up here and there, but people use that to just do the 20 damage attack on it, uh, like the spread attack, not its big like 110 uh, uh, damage attack that it has. So. That's really the only relevant lightning Pokemon I can think of outside of maybe like Zerkatry in like Mildex. But uh, so like I said, not many things are going to hit Empoleon for weakness, which is great since Golisopod is popular, Decidueye is popular, the new Leafeon GX uh, from Ultra Prism looks to be popular as well. So a great weakness to have, which honestly I think makes this card a lot more playable had it been weak to grass. But the main reason we are even playing this thing is for its first attack. For a Water and Colorless, it does 20 times the amount of bench Pokemon in play. And that does mean your opponents as well. So in a perfect world, if both players have a full bench of 5 each, you're going to do 200 damage or 230 with a choice ban. So you have some one-hit KO potential. And one thing that's great about Empoleon, it's actually coming into a, a format that is, I think, conducive to this attack being good. So what I mean by that is, if you look at most decks in the current format, outside of maybe Volcanion, Every deck on the first turn plays an Ultra Ball to grab Tapu Lele GX to grab a Bridget, putting three more Pokemon on their bench. That's kind of the turn one play in almost every deck. So when you have a format like that, that actually sets up Empoleon to be a half-decent attacker. Another popular card in the current format is Zoroark GX. And Zoroark GX is reliant on having a full bench to do the most amount of damage. So with these two things in mind, I think Empoleon is actually coming into a pretty good format uh, Kind of setting itself up to do uh, kind of okay. Now, of course, your opponent can play around this. Uh, they can try to limit their bench size, but I would still argue if they are doing that and not playing down Pokemon that they want and play, that's still helping you in a way, even if you're not able to take a big one-hit knockout on them. So this attack, really solid. Uh, like I said, your opponent can probably play around the attack, and you might not hit for that perfect 230 like you're obviously aiming to, but nevertheless, still a very, very pow powerful attack in my experience. With the choice hand, you're usually hitting around 190 with this card, so that's still a pretty good amount of damage. So, uh, and Poyon does have another attack, not quite as useful, but there are certain situations where it is half decent. So for two water and a car rush, you do 90 damage, and then you discard an energy from your opponent's active Pokemon. 
So there's certain situations, like let's say your opponent is kind of smartly playing around your Empoleon and not benching a lot of stuff. Depending on the deck you're going against, you can just throw down another energy, soften up uh, you know, their active Pokemon, and discard maybe their only energy. If they're some sort of Zoroark GX uh, deck where you know, they only have one energy attached that powers them up, you can discard their only energy that's powering up any of their attacks. Uh, you know, or just anything in general that doesn't have a lot of great energy acceleration, this attack can be great against. So, uh, you know, it, it's very situational, but if you time it right, it can be kind of powerful. But like I said, the main star of the show is going to be that first attack. And typically in the past, I've been very critical of these types of stage two Pokemon where you have, you know, these two energy attack costs and the card doesn't have any energy acceleration built into it and they're kind of hard to power up. Uh, but the reason Empoleon is good is because you have to remember this is a water type. You have access to Aqua Patch to ensure that you can keep streaming Empoleons throughout the course of the game, you know, never kind of missing a turn without attacking. So Empoleon, like I said, has a ton of great things going on for it, but it does have support Pokemon alongside it as well. So since Empoleon does require us to have Pokemon on our bench, we need some good bench sitters to sit there and fuel our uh, Empoleon to attack. So one that I really enjoy is Octillery. So we are playing a 2-2 line of Octillery. It's, of course, that Octillery back from Breakthrough has that Abyssal Hand ability. Once during your turn, you may draw until you have five cards in your hand. It's been, you know, kind of a playable card for the longest time. You guys are probably plenty familiar with it. And one thing you might be thinking is, well, wait, you know, in the past, Nine Tails GX has played Zorark GX instead of Octillery because, you know, you can discard your energies with Aqua Patch and stuff like that. So why aren't you playing Zorark GX instead of Octillery? And it comes down to a few things. The main one, though, is that Empoleon only gives up one prize. And just I don't want to give our opponent any other chances to kind of get around, you know, having to knock out six regular Pokemon if possible. You know, they might be able to knock out one Tapu Lele of ours, but after that, they need to basically just knock out uh, non-GXs from there. So playing Octillery helps out with that strategy, forcing them to keep knocking out all these non-GXs and EXs, taking only one prize at a time. So that's why we are running the Octillery here. Another reason that I think Octillery is fine to run is because uh, there's Glaceon GX coming out of Ultra Prism. Now, granted, it remains to be seen how popular Glaceon will be, but with that ability that it has shutting off abilities for other GXs, Octillery could actually be better than Zora Arc for that reason as well. But like I said, the main reason is because it will force our opponent to only take one prize at a time. So that's why we are playing the 2-2 line of Octillery. And a quick note, we are playing the Ion Pool Remoraid. There are two Remoraids from Breakthrough, but I think this is the better one to play. The other one lets you switch Remoraid with your bench Pokemon. And the reason we don't want that is because that means that water energy will stay on the Remoraid that is on the bench. We actually would prefer to discard it to retreat and be able to use Aqua Patch to get that energy back out. Also, Ion Pool can actually be a half decent attack against certain decks. So let you discard a Stadium card in play, so if you are going against something like a Gardevoir deck that plays Parallel City, or maybe some sort of Garboder variant or something that plays Potown, uh, there are stadiums in the current format that are worth uh, actually knocking out. So Ion Pool, I think this is definitely the preferred Remoraid in the deck. So next up we are playing one copy of Alolan Vulpix. So we are playing Vulpix just for that beacon attack that it has uh, for zero energy. Search your deck for two Pokemon and put them into your hand. So ideally on the first turn, you can play Bridget, search out a Vulpix, maybe a couple Piplups, then retreat into Vulpix and use that beacon attack to grab some more evolution pieces out of your deck. Pretty straightforward card. Uh, one thing that's kind of important to note, this deck does not actually have a GX attack at its disposal. So you actually could in theory maybe run uh, Alone Ninetales GX as a one of, or maybe the baby Alone Ninetales, just because this deck already plays Aqua Patch as it is. So, you know, you might be able to play one of those I don't play that in this list, but like I said, I do think that is an option for you as well. So we need some more bench sitters, and a half decent one right now is going to be Mr. Mime. So we're playing Mr. Mime for that bench barrier ability, prevent all damage done to your bench Pokemon by attacks. So right now at the time of filming, Buzzle, pretty popular Pokemon, very good against some of these low HP evolving basic decks that have, you know, 60 hit points. You know, luckily our Piplup does kind of help against Buzzwell, but nevertheless we need bench sitters anyways, so Mr. Mime I think helps against those types of decks. Or maybe decks that run the Tapu Koko promo and are going to try to de-evolve us by setting up a bunch of de-evolutions. So, uh, you know, maybe Mr. Mime is handy there. Uh, 
So we'll have to see how useful it is as the new format develops. Like I said, this is kind of based on the current format uh, for Crimson Invasion. So this is definitely a flexible spot in the deck. One card I actually have been thinking about trying out is Shining Celebi. That could be a replacement for Mr. Mime if the spread decks don't seem to be a problem for Empoleon. But uh, one reason I've been considering Shining Celebi is because if your opponent is smartly playing around your Empoleon and you're not able to knock them out in one hit, if you're playing Shining Celebi, you can actually copy Primplup's attack, potentially paralyze them, and keep them in the active spot for you to knock them out in one hit with Empoleon on the next turn. So I think that's an option as well. So I definitely think this is kind of a flexible spot in the deck. But like I said, for now, we're going to try the Mr. Mime out and see how it does. And to round out the Pokemon line with debatably the best bench sitter in the whole format, we have two copies of Tapu Lele GX for that Wonder Tag ability. Let's just search out supporters out of our deck. Pretty straightforward card. You guys are probably familiar with that. So up next for our trainer cards that we are playing, we're playing three copies of Cynthia. This is a new supporter from Ultra Prism. Shuffle your hand into your deck and draw six cards. So just a nice form of shuffle draw, particularly in the early game, uh, when we still have a lot of things like rare candies and Empoleons and evolution pieces, uh, you know, maybe in our hand, we might not want a Sycamore. So having Cynthia as another shuffle draw option, I think really helps preserve this deck's resources and prevents you from discarding uh, things you don't want to get rid of so early. Uh, but we are also still playing three copies of N, even though we are already playing Cynthia. So N you guys are probably familiar with, both players shuffle in, draw equal to their prize cards. Great supporter card. Like I said, we are favoring a heavier count of shuffle draw options because of the reasons I just mentioned. But also N is so good in the late game. Even if you are at a low hand size, we are playing the thick octillery count. So even if you have to end yourself down to a low hand size, you can just draw out of it with Abyssal Hand as well. But then we are still playing two copies of Professor Sycamore, of course, one of the best draw supporters in the game. Discard your hand, draw seven. And honestly, the only reason I'm even playing this is because we have Water Energies and Aqua Patch in the deck. We do have things we do want to discard, and I do think having access to Sycamore is going to be worth it. Uh, and also, there's certain times where you don't mind discarding your hand. You might have you know, a handful of stuff you don't need, and you can just discard it, get a fresh hand of seven. So, uh, you know, it's definitely good, but like I said, the main reason I'm playing this over just a straight four count of both of the Shuffle Draw supporters is because we do have Water Energy in the deck that we might want to discard at some point. So that's why we're playing a couple copies of Sycamore still. Then up next, three copies of Guzma, of course, just to choose what we want to take knockouts on. And of course, two copies of Bridget just to, you know, search out three basics out of our deck on the first turn of the game. So nothing too crazy about the supporter count. Going on to the rest of the trainer cards, we have four copies of Ultra Ball, of course, to search out any Pokemon out of our deck. And since you discard two cards from your hand, you can, of course, put water energies in your discard pile as well. Uh, four copies of Rare Candy, of course, that way we can skip that Primplup evolution sometimes and just go straight into Empoleon and start attacking a little bit quicker. So like I mentioned a couple times, we do play Aqua Patch in this list so you get a water energy out of your discard pile and attach it to one of your bench water pokemon so like i said empoleon's attack cost can be slightly awkward but since we are playing these it's kind of easy to keep streaming empoleons throughout the course of the game you rarely ever miss an energy attachment as a result next up we have three copies of choice band just to bump up our damage output a little bit more so like i was saying earlier if both players have a full bench and you have a choice band you hit for 230 which is a big number because you knock out basically everything relevant in the format outside of maybe Decidueye GX. I think that's pretty much the only thing, or maybe Metagross as well, I guess, if you really want to go there too. Uh, but basically, most things in the current format have around 200, 210 hit points. Uh, like I said, 230 is usually the max that we see with Gardevoir GX. So Choice Band really just helps with the numbers to ensure that we can take one-hit knockouts. But we're playing a couple of other tools. We're playing two copies of Floatstone. So unlike the Alola Ninetales variant in the past where they play things like Tapu Koko that has free retreat, this, does, this deck actually does not have any Pokemon with free retreat, so it's actually incredibly important that we do play a couple of copies of Floatstone. Because one thing, if you notice with Aqua Patch, it accelerates energy out of the discard to your benched Pokemon. So for example, if the Pokemon that you want to attach to uh, you know, needs some energy and you're forced to promote something else, you might find it a little bit hard to retreat the active Pokemon and get enough energy on the Pokemon you want to Aqua Patch to as well. So Floatstone is very important in between turns whenever stuff gets knocked out. We can uh, you know, be able to power up a new attacker and, a, and retreat in the same turn, basically. So 
Floatstone, pretty self-explanatory. Uh, one copy of Field Blower, so just to discard tools and stadium cards. Uh, luckily for this deck, we are playing a bunch of one prize attackers, so our opponent's choice bands aren't going to be too big of a deal for us. Field Blower is going to be there mainly to discard some uh, stadium cards that could potentially give us some trouble. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, Parallel City and Poe Town are kind of the big ones. We also have Remoraid to help with that. Uh, hopefully you don't have to attack with Remoraid, but you do have the option. So like I said, there's just not too many things we really want to discard, so I think the one count of Field Blower is fine here. And then the last trainer card we have is two copies of Rescue Stretcher. So we're playing Rescue Stretcher over Super Odd because we have Aqua Patch to get back energy if we choose to. So the extra flexibility with Rescue Stretcher to get a Pokemon back into your hand is a little bit better. And since we do need a full bench basically at all times, that's why we are playing the two count instead of one, uh, just to make sure we can keep streaming Pokemon throughout the course of the game and always have what we need. And then onto the energy cards, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine water energy. So it should be just enough, you know, between the nine water energies and aqua patches, you should have enough energy to last you throughout the course of a game. So guys, that is going to be the list that we are trying out. Pretty straightforward deck, honestly. And actually, I think this would be a good deck if you ever know someone who's getting into the game and you want to give them a deck to play with. This, I think, would be a pretty good one. Like I said, pretty straightforward, not a whole lot of bells and whistles to it. But, uh, you know, Empoleon, I do think it does have a little bit of potential. Uh, you know, being a one-prize attacker that can hit for 200-plus damage only gives it one prize. I think there's something there. You know, being able to play a bunch of uh, these consistency boosting bench hitters like a thick count of octillery lele and then having things like aqua patch uh you know i think there's a lot of support for this card and we'll have to see how it's going to do once ultra prism is legal for play but definitely a deck i really enjoy this is kind of my ideal play style for a deck i love stage two based attackers and you know maybe having something on the bench that helps uh give you some support so like i said i'm really a big fan of this play style and definitely a deck i've been enjoying playing around with but yeah guys, that's going to be pretty much it for this one. Definitely stay tuned to the channel. We're going to have a ton of Ultra Prism coverage coming up over the next couple weeks. So definitely be on the lookout for all of the videos that we're going to be posting. But as usual, feel free to like and subscribe. And if you can support our channel by becoming a patron over at patreon.com slash rarecandytcg or by picking up something from our online store at rarecandytcg.com, it would be greatly appreciated. But with that, I appreciate you watching and we'll see you for the next one.